Welcome to the 98 Central Podcast, where we talk about growing a business, working in media, and building a team that we love. I'm Danielle. I'm the intern here at 98 Central. And today I'm joined with Will Stewart, our CEO, and David Stapp, our senior editor. And this is going to be wrapping up our um, series on career paths um, with our fearless leader and our editing king. Fearful leader. <laughs> Fearful king. Fearful of editor. Editing and computers. Um, so, Will, you started this company. You are yeah. the CEO. Yeah. And um, David, you're the first employee, technically. Is this correct? OG. The yeah. OG. I'll hold the title. Um, that meeting at Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. Right? It worked out. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. fateful meeting in Traveler's like Rest. It was like 10-minute ten, ten interview process. and uh, Gave me a hard drive. I was like, here. <laughs> it's like a drug deal. Slid the hard drive yeah. across the table slowly. <laughs> totally. So you guys are real, real experts in your field. And um, Will, you had this journey of DP to CEO and now yeah. business owner. And um, there's big changes in that. But um, going even further back, just talk about what made you want to work in this business, like that like first initial spark, however young you were, and you know, like as brief as you can, that summary of like how you knew you wanted to do this, and then through college, through your career, um, how you got to this point. Yeah. So, um, I'm for first thing, I'm glad you're our intern. You're killing it. You're rocking. Oh, so you. <laughs> uh, doing fantastic. Thank but you. yeah, so uh, when I was in high school, I came across my dad's photography camera. So um, mm -hmm. learned how to film, uh, to shoot film and took a lot of pictures that were terrible, but was was learning through it through the way. And with film, the thing is, you take the picture and then it's like 20 days later, you, you see the results mm -hmm. of what you what you took. Um, and it was really cool just to, to kind of think like every shot matters. How, how's my exposure? Everything was manual with this. So it had like a little needle that you had to adjust the exposure to. And there's no way for it to automatically set everything. Everything was manual. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was a lot of fun. Got me into the, the world of, of film as far as photography goes. And then understanding what lenses do, how to look at the world through lenses. Um, in high school, I started my first business. Um, that was when the internet was coming along and I had dial up modem at my, at my house. It was 14.4. So it was very, very OG, very slow. Um, and bought a book, a 600 page book on how to program. And so I just read it a couple through, through a couple of times and then started programming. Um, long story short, I realized I sucked at programming, but I was really good at selling and I was really good at, um, understanding brands and kind of what they needed. So started, uh, honing my skills. Got a lot of mentors in my life that helped grow, uh, and the company grew. And then I ended up selling that, working as a creative director for a marketing agency. And then that's when uh, the Canon 5D Mark II came in, on board, which was a great camera. It was revolutionary. It allowed us to get like a really cinematic image for not that much. And so I talked to the owner of, of that company and said, hey, I think we have this great service we could provide for our clients. Can we bring it in? And uh, he said yes. And so I started just building out the, the team there. And loved it, fell in love with it. And I uh, got to a point where I was like, this is what I want to do. I don't want to do the print because by that time, you know, I was creative director. So we were doing print web, you know, all, all sorts of things. Um, and I was like, man, I just really want to focus on video alone. So uh, with the owner's blessing, just branched out and started 90 Central and uh, nearly 10 years ago. Wow. Crazy. Yeah. What a journey. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, but I'll get back to a ton of questions for you. But David, mm -hmm. same question for you. That spark and then through your career, how you got to this point. Yeah. So I also had to suck at something first so that I could figure out what I wanted to do. Um, so back, way back in seventh grade, um, all my friends were skateboarding and I tried to skateboard. I failed at skateboarding, <laughs> but one of my friends had a camera and he handed it to me. He's like, hey, what if you filmed us and we made like a skate video? And I was like, all right, let's let's try it. Let's see what happens. And so we, we shot a bunch of footage on this thing that shot to DV tapes, which were literal tape. Not even like digital media. Mm -hmm. It was shot to a tape. And then I had to figure out, okay, how do I get this on my computer? Okay, then once I figured that out, okay, how do I even like manipulate this? How do I edit this? So me and my dad then went to Best Buy, bought a $100 program called Sony Screen Blast Studio, mm. which was like the baby version of Sony Vegas. Um, and it was the first editing program I ever used. And I'll never forget like the first time I figured out how to get the clips into the program, into the timeline, and started just putting clips in a sequential order. It was garbage, obviously, but <laughs> I'll just never forget like how cool it was. And like I had like this newfound kind of control, like artistic control. Like I was like, oh, if I then put this clip 
here instead of here, I, it's like giving a whole different kind of vibe or something like that, or I've created like a little intro. And so that's when I got the bug mm-hmm. was back in uh, seventh grade. And it definitely grew quite a bit from there as I started just experimenting in er- anything and everything video production, whether that be, you know, like videography, like getting behind the camera, you know, directing, writing. I just, you know, I started to wear every hat and just trying to figure it all out. And this, again, this was before YouTube existed, which is wow. very hard these days to ex- to imagine a world before YouTube. Barren wasteland. You know, yeah, like literally, like 2008 BY before YouTube. <laughs> like, like literally, like it's so, because then as I got into, you know, high school, making lots of short films with my friends and making all kinds of sh- anything I could make a video for, even like book reports for school, I convinced teachers to let me just make a book report, like video, no. just so I could practice. That was the whole purpose was just to practice and figure things out and try new things. Uh, and so did that all the way through high school. And then college is when it started to get like more serious for me. And I started mm-hmm. figuring out like, I mean, I obviously know this is what I want to do, but I need to start like really kind of honing in on like, what are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? And, you know, where should I focus? Um, and so then in college, um, definitely started making a, a great network of friends. Um, we had a, a film group called BNG studios on campus at UNC Greensboro, where I met a lot of those people and, uh, grew a lot of great relationships, started working with all of them on both, you know, passion projects like short films and as well as like professional, like client work and stuff. And so it just kind of grew from there. Um, you know, really focusing on editing. That's when I kind of knew I had several people tell me along my journey that like editing was definitely the part, the, the part where I shine the most. Yeah. Um, you know, you can wear a lot of hats, but you kind of have to know, you know, what's the thing that you're, you're definitely meant to do. So started to just pursue that and, and you know, went years of, um, you know, client work, freelance, all that kind of stuff, work in retail just to pay bills. You know, sometimes mm-hmm. it's, it's feast or famine in that yeah. world. And then uh, eventually got back into it full time. And, uh, you know, I've technically been you know doing professional, you know, works uh, for the last 11 years now. Wow. Which is crazy. That's so, wild. Yeah. Wow. Quite a journey as well. <laughs> um, I'm going to go back to you, Will. Um, so this series obviously is for like advice for college students, um, selfishly, because I get to ask the questions. Yeah. Um, one thing I wanted to focus on first was like, you know, when I came and met you for the first time, you asked me what I wanted to do. And I said, oh, I think I want to do cinematography. And you were like, everyone wants to do cinematography. Yeah, and um, so it's a, it's an intimidating field and there's so much that you have to know. And so what is like, I mean, it's such a broad question, but like aspiring DPs, like how do you start? Like what is, you know, like what's your best advice for like how to kind of get in that that door? Yeah. So the first thing you need to do is look around you and see what tools you have in your hands. Mm -hmm. Like what are the things that are available for you to start honing your craft today? Mm -hmm. And most people in their pocket is an iPhone or something that has higher resolution than the camera that, that, you know, we made lots of money in the first, the first years of the company. Um, And so a, a, a camera like that can make wonderful things. Is it perfect? Is it the perfect camera that the, that the, um, the social media bros, you know, mm-hmm. uh, talk about, no, it's not that, but it can start telling the story. And that's the, that's the thing. People don't really care what camera you use, what lens you use, what lighting you use. You know, if you're wearing a red hat or an airy hat or in red's a brand, a camera brand, um, they want, they care about the story and a good cinematographer, someone who's good at their field knows how to tell a story through, through um, the tools that they have in their hand. Um, one of my mentors was Shane Hurlbut. I got to work with him on in Hollywood several times and and do some great stuff with him. And um, the uh, the thing that I know I learned from him was he would use you know shower curtains on on you know major things that he's he's working on mm-hmm. the things that you wouldn't expect like shower curtains for to diffuse light. And he would use he has these homemade lights that he makes and like has all this like crazy stuff that um, you know and and that really helped me understand like it's it's okay to just use the tools that I have. So that's that's thing number one. Mm-hmm. Uh, thing number two is I would get off of all social media when it comes to forums and just the the bros talking to each other. Um, because a lot of times you start feeling like you're not good enough. You start getting uh, inferiority. You start getting maybe early. And maybe this is this is my story. Mm-hmm. And this is a confession time. But I got kind of sucked into mm-hmm. that, you know, yeah. of, of like, yeah. it's got to be the perfect gear, all that sort of thing. 
Um, and so start looking to mentors and people that are online that are doing really good work that you aspire to and start breaking it down. Start looking at it going, okay, what do I like about this work? Is it the camera movement? Is it the lighting? Is it the way they told the story? And just start learning. Mm -hmm. um, something I, I did a lot of was I would watch uh, movies in black and white. I would put a black and white filter on them and look at them black and white to see like light values. I would watch uh, a portion of it, maybe the first five minutes, and then I would read the script. And then I would read, I'd watch a little bit more and I'd read the script. I mean, mm -hmm. just breaking down movies, you're just, just ingesting it any way you can just to kind of understand, watch it without sound. You just try to, to try to like, get yourself sucked into uh, exposing yourself to the medium in a different way. Yeah, that's great advice. Yeah. One thing that I wrote down is um, that like intimidation factor of like, oh my God, there's so many things out there that you can buy. There's this many gimbals and there's this many mounts and there's this many lenses and like, Oh my God, that's so intimidating. I need, I feel like I need it all and I need to know what everything does, but y you're right to say like, if you, you know, you don't really need all that stuff to start out. Um, yeah. and I, if you have anything to add to that in terms of like the editing side, because software in and of itself can be expensive yeah. or intimidating. And there's like, that's like a whole learning curve as well, because, um, like you may be able to edit a TikTok, but you can't necessarily like edit on premiere and there's a million different features. So do you have any, any advice? Um, in terms of that, like kind of like how to break that bridge that gap. Yeah. And the cool thing about editing, um, I mean, if you literally have any kind of modern device, whether that be a computer or a phone or a tablet, you literally have everything you need, uh, to start. You don't need like a bunch of money or, you know, yeah. anything like that. Cause some people, especially, and the cinematography world gets so caught up in gear. So true. And it's so easy to, and of course, yes, we all love tech. We love new <laughs> yeah. gear and gadgets, but some people are convinced that the gear is what makes the content. Yeah. And it's not even close no. to that. It's the skill level, you know? That's what mm -hmm. it all comes down to. It doesn't matter, you know, how flashy the basketball court is or how what shoes you're wearing. You're not going to be a better basketball player because of that. Yeah. You know, it's all about, you know, practice and yeah. getting into the rhythm and knowing what your skills are. Um, and so if you literally have a computer, there is literal free software out there that you can download right now and start editing. It, mm -hmm. There's nothing stopping you getting in the way. Back in the day, we had to pay hundreds of dollars, get several CDs for installation and all this yeah. stuff. It was just like, yeah. we live in like the most accessible time ever for our industry. And it's kind of crazy mm -hmm. um, because literally you have YouTube, which is an incredible resource for just all kinds of stuff for education. And there's tons of educational resources outside of YouTube, obviously, that you mm -hmm. can either purchase or sometimes find for free, yeah. you know? And so it's getting to the point where it's like, oh, do you even need school for, you know, that, yeah. which, you know, I could argue, no, you really don't. If you have the time and the, the ter determination and you're that kind of personality who can just like, yeah, I'm just going to grind through and just work through it. Cause it can be discouraging. Yeah. It really can. Yeah. You're not going to start off great and you're going to have to fail. You're going to have to fall down and, you know, just work through mm -hmm. it, but you got to also learn from it too. You can't just, you know, like, oh, I failed. All right. Well, you got to also know, okay, how did you fail? Like, why did you fail? And how can you make that better? So, yeah, it, it's it's a really great time right now for anyone who get, wants to get in this industry, especially in the post-production side. You can, I've seen, it blows my mind now. Um, like, there are, like, literal 16-year-olds on YouTube posting stuff they made in a 3D program called Blender. Mm -hmm. And it's mind blowing. Mm -hmm. Like these kids have very bright futures in the yeah. VFX industry. Mm -hmm. And it's all because of the world they're growing up in right now. Like literally, yeah. yeah. Like they're just watching stuff on YouTube. Yeah. Blender is a, yet again, a free 3D program, which competes with some of the higher end 3D uh, programs out there that cost lots of money. And they're just taking the time. Yeah. And they're just like, oh yeah, I'm just going to sit down. I'm going to learn this and I'm going to, you know, figure out what I'm, what I'm best at and, really, you know, hunker down on that and it can get some crazy results. And it's just, it's super inspiring, you know, that, you know, there's no excuse, but you getting in your own way, mm -hmm. you know, to just learn the programs, learn the techniques and to just understand it. And, you know, like you did, like analyzing the films, you just got to, sometimes you just got to look at your own work and try to figure out like what can be better. Yeah. Listen to peer reviews, you know, listen yeah. to your, your colleagues Don't you work with. Yeah. Feedback's really important. Yeah. So that's kind of the biggest thing is like, don't be afraid just to, you know, to just start because literally there's, there's nothing else in your way, but you just, sure. you know, being afraid to start. And don't you think ego is a big thing? Like don't yeah. have, check your ego at the door. 
and yeah. just say, I'm a beginner. I'm starting out. Yeah. And, and no one there, no one has high expectations of people no. who are new to the industry. Yeah. It's not like, you know, there's anything anybody has to prove. Just do the work and and do your best. Totally. It's funny with like in our industry, painters are someone who's like a like an art art major or whatever who's who's gonna paint. Like they actually paint, you know, yeah. and then they say, <laughs> I'm a painter. But in our industry, I'll, I'll talk to people and say, what are you? And I'll, I'm a cinematographer. Great. Show me your last short. Well, you know, <laughs> and there's like this story. And and like, it's just a whole story. I'm like, don't tell me a story. Show me, Show me. Yeah, Show me what you're, yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. And then, then I'll, I'll give you a title of cinematographer or whatever. Right. But if you're just a guy that's just, you know, on YouTube and Facebook, you know, fighting yeah. over the latest cameras or just so stuck in your mind that you're not actually making work. Well, you're just yeah. someone on YouTube and, and, and on Very Facebook. True. Yeah, I could care less about your resume. Yeah. That's not yeah. telling me like even half the picture oh, yeah. of who you are and in your skill set. So just show yeah. it to me, like right. literally. Totally. Um, well, I want to shed light on, um, you know, early 90s days were very different than what the company is now. And yeah. like your role has changed so much. Um, can you shed light a little bit on like maybe the like the differences between like the beginning um, and what you were doing sort of more like on the field and like out on set every single day versus like owning a business and like um, just kind of like the maybe the misconceptions that you had in that journey and like where you find yourself now. Yeah. So initially when we first started 90 central, just getting money in the door is the big thing. Yeah. Uh, so like, <laughs> I think we made $25,000 the first year, which was just in, insane. It's just me and my wife and you know, our $800 <laughs> a month rent. Um, and it was, it was fun. It was a great, great time. I had a, um, a Ford Mustang GT and I had enough equipment to fit in the, in the trunk of that. And mm -hmm. that was it. So I had like a tripod, a camera, a mic, and maybe a light or two. And that was it. And so it just, <laughs> it's just starting out as best you can, just doing whatever work you could. Yeah. Um, and the, um, the, the journey was just perfecting my, my craft. I knew, I, I knew I had a certain level of ability, but it wasn't nearly what it needed to be. So um, once I was able to kind of find some people and some mentors to start working under, I was trying to get on any set I could to work however I could. Mm -hmm. You know, the goal was I love DPing. That was the director of photography for those who don't know. Um, I love that. But, you know, like not everybody's looking for a DP, and especially I didn't have the experience for mm -hmm. it. So, um, you know, you gaff, you you do all these different positions, you PA, you do whatever you can um, I was on a really fun Volkswagen shoot and I got to be the first AC. And so like, that was, that was a blast. And I was just happy to be there. Um, so, uh, the first four or five years was the, perfecting my craft and, and kind of getting to the point where I was able to translate uh, a lot of the stuff that I knew about photography and just all that to, to video, getting my lighting skills better. Um, and I started just becoming a journeyman DP. I'd work, got to work for, um, uh, a lot of different people, um, Michelin and Samsung and, um, John Deere. We did a, a national spot for John Deere that, um, was shown during the Grammys and the pro bowl. It was wow. fun. Um, and then, uh, tried to pursue the, the narrative stuff to say like, do I want to do like narrative? Do I want to do films? Realized that wasn't for me. Uh, I was on sets in West coast, saw the 16 hour days. And people were working, Ooh. you know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, it's a different culture. Um, I have a lot of friends that do it for a short amount of time and I'm, I'm having friends now that are starting to retire out of it and do other things. But um, for me, it just, it wasn't the kind of lifestyle I wanted. Um, I was married at the time, had a daughter, didn't want to, you know, be just out and gone all the time. And I'm a homebody. I like being home. I like being yep. in my own bed. So there's a lot of kind of culture things that, that made me go, okay, it's time to like really consolidate, start promoting the company um, here locally. And so for a few years, it was just me uh, and then contractors. So I had like so many contractors. Um, and one time it peaked to uh, 60 different contractors that we'd bring on set. And we were doing amazing stuff. It was, it was a blast. And we still work with like most of them. Mm -hmm. um, but I was exhausted. And so December would come and I'm like, man, look back over the, the year. I'm just, just spent. I'm just completely worn out. Uh, just being a freelancer with a bunch of contractors that I'm having to manage. And it was just exhausting. Yeah. Um, Fun, but exhausting. And then I was like, I really want to, I need to hire an employee. I need to hire somebody full-time start pulling along with me and not be one of those people who'd be like, hey, go do this. But someone would be like, hey, I was thinking we should do this. You know, that kind of thing. So um, put out a, a, a call. If I knew I needed an editor first and he's because mm -hmm. that's the, a skill set that I always contracted out and never did myself. So to find an editor, um, and that's going to be your your core, you know. Um, and like for three months was just trying to find a good editor and could not find someone that, that I thought really just understood my vision and the look that I was going for and everything. Um, and I was on set, David emailed me and I looked at literally the first minute of one of his shorts and I was like, this guy gets it. 
He gets Amazing. it. Like, it's the guy. <laughs> I mean, I didn't have to see much more than that. And I was like, I, you know, I saw the other stuff. I was like, he gets it. He, he understands narrative. He understands humor. Like, he's he has that quirky humor that I have as well. Mm -hmm. I think he's going to be great. And so, yeah, we met at a Duncan and uh, – <laughs> Um, and when he came on board and you, you might want to tell a story, but like, I, I guess we had, I don't forget how many projects we had going at the same time, but I had like five or six editors going at one time. <laughs> yeah, and I, I literally. basically handed you a, a garbage bin full of fire on fire. And it's like here, not that, not that anything that being, was being done was garbage, but it's just like, it was just a, a mess that needed to be yeah. straightened out. Um, and so that you were asking about the transition from freelance to CEO. Yeah. Um, it's been interesting and it's been a great growth for me because we've been on this path, I guess, for about three years, almost three years now, um, you know, had uh, the coronavirus and then had like just like crazy things with the economy. And, um, you know, I, I told David when the coronavirus hit, I was like, I don't know what we're going to do, but we have enough work for, for a while. For, for those of you listening, I started here at 98C on March 1st, 2020. <laughs> Perfect which time. Which was like D-Day, basically. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. It was great. Yeah, and I was stressing so much about, can the company afford it? I don't want to bring someone in and not be able to, like, you know, a month later be like, hey, sorry, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and the company just blew up. And then so we had in we a good never way. slowed down. No. Never. Never. Uh, won an Emmy that year, um, which was incredible, <laughs> you know, to be an Emmy award winning director. Um, and then uh, brought Jen in and Jen was the next hire and mm -hmm. then just started just hiring out from there. And, you know, as of July, we'll have 10 people here. So it's been Amazing. incredible. And it's been a great education for me as a CEO because mm -hmm. now I am having to give give away parts of the the job that I even even that I love because I love being on the field. I love working with clients, love, love our crew that we get to work with, both our contractors and the people internally. Um, so, but it's taught me a lot about trust, about how to find really good people and and give them the information they need to make great decisions mm -hmm. and then just leave it up to them. And it's fun watching the stuff that comes back out of the field. Yeah, I'm still in the field some. I still get to, yeah. to y'all let me still go play. <laughs> but um, David's picked up a lot of that and, yeah. and does some directing as well. And um, he's been killing it. Yeah. And so it's been fun. Yeah. And actually, it's a perfect lead in because I was going to um, talk to David about um, it's especially in this field of media or production, video production, film and tele television production in general. Um, there's so many different um, roles that you can play and you might not know exactly what role or what hat you want to wear. Um, and you've been editor like that's how I knew you when I came in and now you've been directing more. Um, and I've seen I, I've seen you like, you know, do do both so well and have the opportunity to do both. Like, can you speak a little bit to moving laterally, like in um, production and like how just kind of like encourage people who think, Oh, I'm going to do this and I'm never going to get to do this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so like, like I mentioned earlier, I've, I've worn a lot of hats over the years. You know, I've, I've done screenwriting, I've mm -hmm. done pr producing, I've been a PA, you know, I've, I've gone, I've worn every hat there is. Um, and so I, I always knew that I loved directing, mm -hmm. uh, especially like my own content, like short films and things. Mm -hmm. I loved, um, you know, coming up with just concepts. I, I think that it comes uh, to like the inventor mm -hmm. side of like the working genius. I just love to take concepts and just like having that small seed that can just start this whole avalanche of ideas that just come in. And that just gets me super excited. And so I, I've always loved to just keep taking it all the way to completion. And that meant directing it as yeah. well. So that that's what's led to me just directing tons of short films over the years. And every short film I do, it's always, you know, taught me something new or it's helped me, uh, you know, kind of strengthen some of my other things that I was have been working on, you know, different skill sets of like how to communicate with people on set and how to collaborate and kind of like, like you like having trust, you know, yeah. sometimes it can be hard to let go of certain things like, Oh, I don't know if they're going to do it right. You know what I mean? So, um, I've always just kind of had a, a, a natural tendency to take charge of things. Mm -hmm. I, I've just kind of known that since I was an early, at an early age, I, I think it came from, just watching my my dad grow up, um, growing up, he was he's a preacher. Mm -hmm. And so I always watched him every Sunday, just like, you know, at the front of the church, preaching, you know, taking charge, leading people, you know, consulting with them, you know, whatever. And um, I think it just kind of like rubbed off on me because I just always kind of gravitated more just taking charge of situations and, you know, leading things. And so obviously that, that kind of translated really well to directing because you're mm -hmm. working with many people. Um, all working towards a central goal of achieving uh, this vision you have for a project. So I always loved 
directing, but I've always known I'm not the best director and I've always got things I can improve upon. So that's why, you know, I, I definitely gravitated more towards editing first because that was like the thing I just knew right. and I was just like the most comfortable with. But I didn't want to lose out on directing. And so um, over the years, you know, I just kept doing it on the side. You yeah. know, I did all the client work I could, you know, that paid bills. But then anytime I got a chance, I would try to do more and more uh, directing stuff. And that's something we've talked about uh, here at the company. I've been trying to, you know, get into that more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, which just helps with, you know, delegating things. If you're having to obviously grow in your role and having to take on other things, you know, it helps to have other people to fill in those gaps. Absolutely. Otherwise you're going to just, you know, burn out yeah. like, real fast. So yeah, I would say it's, it, there's, there's no reason you can't, you know, branch out from yeah. where you are. You're not, you're putting yourself in a box. And now if you are in an environment where you are in a box, maybe that's the issue is it's mm -hmm. the environment you put yourself in. Maybe there's like, oh, yeah, this is where you live and there's no room to grow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, that's when you have to kind of like uh, understand like, oh, okay, yeah, this might not be the place for me. And freelance is a little different. You know, obviously this is like an actual like full-time job. Um, but that's kind of like the best thing about this place is like if you got a passion and you've got, you know, the skills for it, you know, you can, you can do anything, yeah. you know, as, as long as you, you know, you can put in the work and, and, and obviously balance it and manage it. So that's kind of a tricky thing too, with, you know, overseeing the post department, I have to make sure that post is taken care of if I'm going out in the field and directing. And yep. so there's definitely a lot of, uh, you know, delegation and time management that you have to kind of manage and you have to kind of have that's kind of like a natural skill you can definitely develop it too uh but there's definitely some certain skills you have to have or you know be aware of that you need to develop if you're going to try to wear multiple hats yeah. like that mm -hmm. it's 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 going to be kind of necessary for that yeah. yeah i think it's really important too because when you get like so hell-bent on one thing that you think you want to do um you shut yourself out of a bunch of other things that could potentially even help you in that um aspect like yeah. um i've been editing more here and that's taught me so, it gives you a context for so many things that yes. happen on set that you might not have even thought of like yep. for like for example why we sleep like yeah i didn't even know that before <laughs> and now it's like well of course we yep. have to do this and in, in, all, in all of these ways and like you know why you have to have a shot list and why it's important to stick to that shot list and etc yeah. etc cetera, et cetera. Um, you're not going to know that if you never looked at Premiere or whatever, you know, editing mm. software you might be using. Um, yeah. Those were like the main questions that I had. Um, again, this is like more of an advice um, podcast. So if there's like any like other things, any general like one liners that you guys have. You know, AJ's was never give up. I think that's a really great one. Very inspirational. Very, 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 very original. Inspirational. <laughs> very original. <laughs> um, yeah, if you guys have anything else to add. Well, I mean, what I tell people is makers make. If mm -hmm. you're a maker, you're going to make something. Um, and great. And then I follow that up with fakers fake. So, you know, you can buy a camera, you can have a flat build hat, and you can look good on Instagram. But show me your reel. Show me what yeah. you're doing. Um, and just start today. Do do the work that you need to do, because um, as someone who hires people in this industry, I'm looking for hungry people mm -hmm. who are uh, showing me flashes of brilliance. You know, just show me that that little flash there, especially if it's entry level like of, of things that you're, you're doing. And, you know, we'll we'll give you the work in the in the in the yeah. coaching to get you the yeah. rest of the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. David. Yeah. I, I would just say, like, literally, just do it. Just, you know, to quote Shia, Shia LaBeouf, <laughs> um, just literally just start doing it. You have to understand you're, if you're just getting started, you're not going to be good. You, yeah. It's just how it is. No one is Hard just like a natural out. born editor. No one's a natural mm -hmm. born cinematographer. So it's true. just not how it is. It's not like a, like an instinct kind of thing. I mean, you, you can obviously have things you can kind of bring into it. You're mm -hmm. like, oh, okay, I'm starting to pick this up quicker. But- yeah, you're just going to have to work at it. You're just going to have to keep figuring out, you know, what, and you also have to know yourself, yeah. like, how do I learn best? How do I, like, you know, am I a visual learner? I can just, like, watch a video on YouTube and like, all right, yep, I got it. Or do I need to, like, actually do it? And I, I know very well I am a guy who needs to do it. Mm -hmm. I need to, if I'm following along with, like, a tutorial or I'm trying something out, I just have to get my hands dirty, get in the program, and just start figuring it out and doing it myself. Because then I get muscle memory, you mm -hmm, know? It's totally. just, by, just by actually doing, not just watching so yeah there's there's literally no excuse none just do it just do it, just do it. makers make never give up that's right that's makers, really make, <laughs> makers make fakers fake that's and right. haters hate and haters do hate that's the name of the podcast <laughs> okay great well what are you guys digging this week well um so oh i, I show and tell 
this is the Lark bottle. Water bottle, if you're listening. The Lark. Um, and it's really cool because it has a little uh, USB port that um, has a little UV light in it, and you turn it on, and then it will clean your water for you. So if your water bottle is getting scuzzy or something, you, you haven't washed it for a while. <laughs> Not that that ever happens with me, but, you know, if you just hit the button and it cleans your water for you. And I have a problem. I have lots of water bottles. Yep. <laughs> There's a lot. <laughs> we live in a time where water bottles have USB ports. <laughs> I, I, I need I it. Just... <laughs> hey, man, the zombie apocalypse. I'm going to be drinking some <laughs> fresh water. water from Lark. Until from the Lark. electricity is gone. And That's then... <laughs> true. Hey, you know. <laughs> Um, I've, this is, I wouldn't say necessarily this week, but over the last like month, I've been really digging, um, a program called Unreal Engine 5. Um, and there will be much more to come on this, mm. this subject, but it's a program we have been learning here at the studio that will be used for some very, very exciting things in the world of 3D animation and things like that. I won't get into it too much here. Um, but me and AJ, our junior editor, have been just deep diving into it and learning anything and everything we can uh, through courses and whatnot. And it's been a heck of a journey and we've had some really great payoff lately. It has just been really exciting for like the future of, you know, certain services we'll be able to offer to our clients. So, so can't okay. wait. Really cool. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, I have been digging my new record player. Which, oh. Yeah. I got it about like, Two or three weeks ago, um, my friend was, I've always wanted one. And my friend was like, I have one. Do you want one? I was like, yeah, sure. Oh my goodness. Um, so I got it. It's it's pretty old, but um, it's a Crosley, but it's not, it, it's like the bigger one. I think it goes for like 200. And I pretty much got it for free. So, nice. Wow. Yeah. Congrats. Yeah, it was really nice. And then um, I have like five records now. And I went to Horizon Records in Greenville. Yes. Love that place. So cool. I was there for like an hour just looking around. So romantic. Yeah, so romantic. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, that's what I've been doing. That's so, cool. Yeah, Very that's, cool. What's that's, your favorite record so far? You got to tell us that. Yeah. So the first one I bought was Abbey Road because I felt like that was very like, okay, Good. first record. Classic. Um, but there's this um, French brand that I really love. Um, they're called L'Imperatrice. I, that was really, sorry, that was, I butchered that. But the I would never called, have guessed you the saw album that. is called Taco Subo, which is not a French phrase. I love tacos. Forget taco soup. It's the best. Taco soup. <laughs> um, I ordered that one on Amazon because I was like, I need this album, and I've just been listening to it like nonstop for the past year. Um, I really love them. It means their their band name name uh, their band name means the Empress in English. If oh, that helps anyone cool. find them, I recommend them. It's like, anyways, I won't get into it. Um, oh man. Um, cool. Thanks. So that has been. Our career paths entire series um thank wow, you guys conclusion for giving wow. me advice i'll probably ask more off air as i always do yeah, all pleasure. the questions um so we're 98c you can find us on 98c.org you can find us on instagram linkedin facebook all 98c um so thanks for listening we hope you enjoyed Thanks for the reminder for me to make sure my phone's on silent. Very considerate of you. Appreciate that, dude. Boom. This is it. We're in it. Great.